All right, here we go, guys. A dark, dreary Sunday, October 29 edition of Picking Boats by the Side of the Road. Uh, yeah, we I did see three boats here in the North Fork of Long Island, Eastern Long Island. Uh, one is a Scout, one is a Small Whaler, and one is a Grady White. So some premium brands there, some well-known brands. And I'm curious what the prices are. I have not stopped and looked at any of them. Apologies in advance if the windshield is a little messy. It is uh, a light drizzle right now. They, there is heavier rain in the forecast in a little bit. We'll try to bang these out. I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to hit the Scout first. We'll see uh, the details on that. I am curious on the prices of all these. Uh, and you know, we'll offer our opinion at the end of the video. Hope you enjoy. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing and we'll check back in when we're closer to that Scout. All right, we are in the town of Southhold now. We're heading east on Route 48. Um, and that Scout, I think, is up there. I don't know what this is. This looks like to be somebody's empty lot. We've seen quite a few boats here for sale in the past. And it does look like they keep stored boats here as well. Uh, it's definitely not a dealer lot, but it, it, it's probably somebody who owns the property and, and just rents it out. Uh, to people who want to store their boats. I'm going to just have to figure out, because I don't want to block the road. I'm going to get on the sidewalk a little. Here's the Scout. Let's see uh, Let's see what the details are. I'm hoping there's a price on it. All right, let's see what we got. All right, we're not dealing with... Uh, we didn't put the mic on today. I left in a rush. But here it is. There's the for sale sign. It is a Scout. 220 hours to 2022. Scout Dorado 210, 220 hours, 55K with trailer. There's the phone number. Nice looking boat. Obviously, it's a new boat, a newer boat, a 2022. I wonder if this is a COVID boat, if somebody got into boating because of COVID and uh, they just don't want to do it anymore. 150 horsepower Yamaha. It's a boarding ladder that's integrated. It looks like, no, it's not a boarding ladder. It looks to be some kind of uh, storage area. Maybe this is a cutting board. Maybe that's a little, a bait well there. Here is where the ladder would go if you want to step in after swimming. A couple rod holders here. Typical dual console layout. You see the back-to-back -back seats there. One captain's chair there. It's a Garmin uh, GPS depth finder up there. Little bit of storage on, on the port side. There's a flip up bolster seat here. It looks like uh, when the engine's tilted up, this has to come up. Interesting design. Uh, 55K, not a bad price for a 21 footer, a Scout uh, with a trailer. Yeah. It's got a bimini top on it. Give you a shot of the front. Again, it, it, these dual consoles are you know, really intended to give you the best of both worlds. You have seating for many people. I mean, you got three here, you got two or three more here. There's a jump seat there on that side too. There's a jump seat here. There's obviously seating in the front, um, but it still affords you a little bit of fishability, not as much as a center console, obviously, but still a decent amount. There's a glove box there too. There's another glove box behind the Garmin. Um, not, a, not a bad price. Uh, ooh, aluminum prop. You don't see a lot of these anymore. Um, but honestly, not a bad price. Now, I personally am not a huge, huge fan of Scouts only because I think they're way overpriced new. Uh, they, they really put a lot of bells and whistles on the boat, kind of like Everglades, but I think Everglades is a better built boat. Um, and for what they charge, especially for their larger models, this is again just my humble opinion, don't get offended scout owners. Um, another one of these little uh, storage areas or bait boxes here. Don't get offended scout owners, that's just my opinion. Um, but 55k for a one year old boat, 220 hours, very reliable power on it, trailer included, trailer's in great shape. Um, it's an easy loader trailer, but it's a bunk style trailer, not a, a roller trailer. It's actually a big trailer. You can see that the uh, the bunks in the back extend uh, past the boat. 
Um, not a bad little deal. Gonna be hard to beat this one out of these three boats. Again, having no idea what the other two cost. All right, I think the whaler is next. I'm gonna have to make a pit stop at my boat though. Just drop off some stuff. Uh, and then we'll, we'll check out that whaler and then the Grady. All right, it's, uh, it's a few minutes after we saw that scout. And I'm in the town of Kutchog now. Now we're heading west on Route 25. You see it's, the rain is coming down a, a, a hair more than it was before. And I believe that whaler is somewhere in front of us. So let's see, I think it's gonna be just past the next stoplight we hit. I have this, uh, this Honda in front of me that some godforsaken reason just keeps hitting his brake light so now he's gonna have to hit him because we lost the light but uh he's one of those annoying drivers that likes to hit the brake light even when there's nobody in front of him which i you know don't understand but i think the boat is uh just in front of us this light takes a while it's a three-way light we'll check back in when when we're right in front of it right at this antique store. You know, I never noticed this. What's crazy is it looks like an older small whaler, 13. Just kind of fitting that it's in front of an antique store. Uh, let's see what we got. All right. Oh boy, 12,900. No price, uh, no year on it. There's the number. Might be a 15. You guys who know whalers better, I'm bad at this. I'm, I'm gonna stick to a 13. Uh, I think the 15's a little bigger. But you can see it's it's got a anchor locker storage in the front, wooden seat right in front of the driving position, uh, could be refinished. There's the bench seat for the driving. Uh, 70 horsepower Yamaha on the back. Let's see if we can get a year off the hen. Um, this is access to the gas tank, the bilge pump, the battery. It's a nice setup here. I like this. This cover that extends down, protects your battery. Um, yeah, this, this would be a little runabout boat in the bay. Let's see. Can we tell off the hen the year? Oh, God. The rub rail is blocking it. Boston Whaler Inc. It looks like 80-something. That looks like an 8, maybe 83 hard to tell it's right up there to the right uh, so I'm gonna stick with early 80s on this it, it looks vintage to that a uh, little single axle trailer I don't know about this price uh, I would definitely take that scout over this um, last registered in 22 in Maine interesting interesting well maybe there's a New York sticker on it somewhere too there is no New York sticker on it. Um, although it is registered in New York. Let me check the other side. It should scoot with a 70. Um, I'm sure this weighs nothing. No, it's got New York numbers, but a main registration. Uh, maybe you don't need to display your numbers in Maine. Maybe this is an older number. But there you go, almost 13 grand for what I presume is a 13 foot whaler. Again, guys, keep me honest, those of you that are whaler experts. Uh, let me know what you think about the price. Uh, for all I know, right, we didn't call. This could have been fully restored, uh, the, the foam redone. Uh, but certainly the wood here could use a refinish if you wanted to make it look nice and put some varnish on it, make it look like teak. Uh, yeah. Not too crazy about this one. Let's go. Let's go find that uh, that Grady White before this rain starts getting any heavier. All right, and we're now in the town of Jamesport, and here is that Grady White that I was talking about. This is gonna be the last. 
last boat. Ooh, I didn't notice this inboard outboard. Ah, what is it with the North Fork and inboard outboards? All right, let, let's see what we got on this. All right, it actually looks like it's in decent shape. And it's hard to beat this price. 3500 Polar Tax, there's the number, 631-678-2200. So 227C pair or so. Oh boy. Look at that, it's gonna be hard to pick up, but a 747 flying very low over us. You don't see many of them. Of course, the one day I forget my mic. Um, well, there's a trim piece missing here. Let's see if we can get a year on it. Where's the hin? Don't see a hin. Transom seems solid. It's a clean boat. I would guess mid to late 80s, perhaps early 90s. Big trim tabs on it. Uh, there's the one thing I don't like about this. An inboard outboard. A lot of people say they're easier to work on. Still looking for a hen. Am I, you know, oftentimes I see it when I'm editing the video. Don't see it anywhere though. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder maybe the transom was redone. I don't know. You know what? It could be behind the for sale sign. Well, you'll have to call or text to get the number. But yeah, this is a traditional walk around. They made the the Weekender, which was the 20-foot version of this. The Seafarer was the 22-foot version of this. A little bit of gel coat cracking here. Nothing to be concerned about. The hull actually looks in really good shape. Not a big fan of these plastic uh, through-hull fittings. Easily changed out to brass or just keep them. Um, you know, typical scratches for, for this vintage. Big swim platform back here. That's nice. Um, see the cushions here. Trailer looks like it's seen better days. Fenders are missing. Looks like the tires have a decent amount of tread on them, but uh, you know, uh, it's a roller trailer. I think that with inboard outboards is like a, uh, a North Fork custom. I, I, I will say though, this price is hard to beat. Hard to beat. Um, let's step inside and take a look. Yeah, you can see there's a couple of uh, a couple of Garmin units up there. I'm not sure how that's going to show up. Um, there's the engine cover, some rod holders here. I presume there's a 350 Mercruiser or some variation of a 350 down there. Love these little fish or storage boxes behind the seats. I presume this piece, this cushion piece goes right back there fits over that so you have more seating um, there are muffs there maybe somebody did run the engine I mean if this engine is running and you want to get on the water cheap you know you, you put some money into this maybe uh, either buy a new trailer you can see the see the rust on the trailer um, or just have this trailer rebuilt maybe pick some of these uh, some of these end pieces these trim pieces that are missing, it's, it's hard. And this, this is what should be here on the other side. Uh, it's a vent, I guess, too, for the engine to let some of the, the heat expel. It's a nice boat. I mean, it's a clean boat. 3500 bucks. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. There's a Bimini top, too. It gives you some shade. It'll come right over the, the forward seating area. Not a bad deal, guys. All right, we made it before the rain. Let's jump back in the in the Honda and I'll offer you my thoughts. All right, we're heading home now. Town of Laurel. Back Now we're heading east on 25, about to hit Mattatuck where I live. Um, so despite that Grady White being the cheapest, uh, there's nothing more expensive than a cheap boat. Obviously, I don't know how that engine runs, if it runs state-of-the-out drive clearly the trailer needs a little bit of work I, I would probably pass on that uh, you know I, I'm not a fan of inboard outboards there's a lot of things that can go wrong especially if you keep it in the water you got a constant maintenance with those and look every 
every boat engine requires maintenance. It's but it, it compartmentalized on an outboard is one thing. Dealing with things under the water that are a little bit beyond your control, I I'm just not a fan. I'm personally not a fan. I get a lot of people own them. A lot of people have bought them over the years. Uh, but there's a reason there aren't many made anymore. Uh, certainly for speed and efficiency, they're great. But the maintenance thing is what would kill me. Um, I would be a hard pass on that whaler. Again, I think it's a 13 footer. You guys that are whaler experts, keep me honest here. Um, that price, almost 13 grand for what I believe is close to a 40 or a 40 year old boat. It did look like it was 80 something on the hind. The rub rail blocked some of it. Um, you know, that Scout, I'm not a fan of dual consoles, but 55K for a 21 footer with uh, one of the most reliable engines ever built and uh, a 2022 with low hours to boot with a near perfect trailer in 2023 that's not a bad deal a little counterintuitive i'm picking the boat that's the most expensive by a long shot but that's that's the one i would probably take if you put a gun to my head and told me you must pick one of these three boats let me know what you think in the comments thank you so much for watching as always if you like these videos hit that like button and if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this please consider subscribing